Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the Sicilian defense with the C3 Sicilian or the Alapin Sicilian uh, or the Alapin Sicilian. It was named after Semyon Alapin, uh, a Russian grandmaster or a, a master which who lived in the 19th century, uh, in the early 20th century. And it's a defense which was never really held in high regard uh, up until the, I would say, second part of the 20th century, when uh, people realized that uh, black's second move, d5, isn't such a strong response and that black doesn't equal as easily. Prior to that, it was considered that after the move c4, c5, c3, and then d5, black has already equalized, but then, then that changed. So, after e4, and c5 uh, white doesn't go for knight to f3 which is uh, entering many open sicilian lines such as the knight or for some other popular variations uh, neither does he play knight to c3 which is entering the close sicilian lines uh, resembling the king's indian attack or the grand prix or some other variations but uh, white is simply preparing to push d4 uh, and support it with the move c3 so white plays the move c3 and that's why this is called the c3 sicilian or the alapin sicilian now this move has a simple plan uh, it's preparing to to push d4 however it has a clear down, downside as well uh, the first one uh, is that the knight has lost its uh, uh, natural developing square the c3 square and the knight is going to have to go somewhere else because uh, if you try to develop now uh, you are going to have to play d4 and then knight to d2 or in most cases in the alapin sicilian you're going to play knight to a3 and then knight to c2 or knight to c4 so first of all you have a problem with your b1 knight secondly uh, this is a position which often results uh, in, an in an isolated queen spawn for white and uh, your d pawn is most often going to be isolated then you are going to have a structural defect because of that uh, besides that there are no other downsides for white uh, for black on the other hand uh, this could be uh, a surprise because this isn't an opening an opening which is often chosen by white and uh, secondly it doesn't give black that many options uh, that he often has after knight to c3 or knight to f3 so this is the restraining black's repertoire uh, quite a lot and if black isn't prepared he could easily uh, enter a variation he doesn't know and and fall victim to that so now to c3 there are basically only two moves either knight to f6 or d5 as i already said d5 uh, was considered to be the best move for a long time and uh, only recently, I mean 30 or 40 years ago, uh, people realized that the move isn't so strong and today the main move is actually knight to f6. So knight to f6 or d5 should be played by black in this variation. Let's go over d5 first. Now this move is, uh, first of all it isn't provoking a tempo gain because if e takes d5, queen takes d5, the knight can't go to c3. Uh, to chase the queen away so this isn't a tempo tempo loss for black and it's uh, it's an okay move i mean it's hard to say which move is better the engine like the engines like them both but they are just very different okay to d5 uh white has only one option you have to take so he takes d5 queen takes d5 and the best move for white here and probably the only move for white here is the move d4 because you have to start developing your pieces you have to open up your bishop and if you don't play d4, then uh, black is in some positions threatening the move c4, and after that you can't play d4 without black being able to capture Ampassan. Now to d4, uh, black has several moves. Black has three moves, basically, but two main moves. The first move is the move knight to f6. After knight to f6, white should, should just continue normal development and play knight to f3. And now, after knight to f3, once again... Uh, black has two options this is uh, technically this is called the barman defense after queen takes d5 but most people just call it call it the alapin or the c3 sicilian so after knight to f3 uh, black can play either bishop to g4 pinning the knight or e6 uh, closing down the bishop still inside the pawn chain but but still a good position i think bishop to g4 is a more natural move and especially if you're a beginner you should choose this because it it's restraining by its development it's weakening the defense of d4 and uh, most importantly, you are you aren't closing down your bishop on c8. But after you play e6, uh, your bishop is most often going to to develop on the b7 square, so it might be okay. Uh, okay, so after bishop to g4, uh, white should unpin with bishop e2, e6 now uh, that the bishop is outside of the pawn chain, h3 chasing the bishop away, bishop h5 and castles. You can also castle instead of h3. Both moves are okay. 
Now knight to c6, normal development, bishop to e3, and now cd4, cd4, and bishop to e7. And you, you have to notice that in all variations, when, cap, when black captures on d4, you are going to recapture with your c-pawn. That's why you played c3 in the first player, place on move 2. So you have to support your center with the pawn, because your d4 pawn now is controlling a lot of key squares. And now your knight actually has a square to develop to. So in some variations, especially in the barman defense, you're always going to wait for, for black to capture on d4. So you can capture with the c pawn and thus free up the c3 square for your knight so that's the that's the the best move and the only move if after c takes d4 you capture with the bishop or with the knight then you have still left your knight un, undeveloped on the b1 square you are uh, restraining the black knight from coming into b4 but that's really not a big threat so always capture with the pawn remember that so after c takes d4 bishop to e7 this is sort of the beginning of the of the mainline barman defense now the second move uh, after knight to f6, knight to f3, if not bishop to g4, is the move e6. Now to e6, uh, white has three moves. I think the best move is knight to a3 because you are preparing, you aren't preparing the move bishop to c4. You are simply preparing to play knight to c4 or knight to c2. Uh, and to this, black has two moves. Uh, he can play either queen to d8, immediately removing the queen from uh, the square which it could be chased away from. So to this you continue with knight to c2 or knight to c4 and then after knight to c6 you play normally. Or the more commonly played move instead of queen to d8 is knight to c6 and after knight to c6 you can play bishop to, uh, I'm sorry, knight to b5 and now you're of course threatening to win everything, forking a family fork, queen, rook and king. So to this black has to play queen to d8 and now white captures away from the center with d takes c5. This is I believe the only variation of the alapin in which white captures uh, with d takes c. Now in this position uh, if black takes the queen black is losing, I will show you that first. So if queen takes d1, you simply play king takes d1 and you have, as black you have lost the pawn and you are threatened uh, to, to, to lose the rook so you have to do something about it and after king to d7 and b4 white has a clear pawn up and uh, winning and white still has castling rights and better pieces and the bishop pair is more powerful etc etc so after d takes c5 uh, don't exchange the queens that's losing you play bishop takes c5 simply recapture, recapturing the pawn and if white takes on d8 you play knight takes d8 you can either play king takes d8 it's, it's okay as well I mean yeah okay if uh, if white takes on d8, you have to play king takes d8 because otherwise you lose the exchange with knight to c7 check, so be careful. Okay, uh, so after e6, uh, knight to a3 is the main move and uh, for white. And remember that after knight to c6, you, you can play knight to b5 to provoke this exchange. And after queen d8, dc5, uh, perhaps black is going to make a mistake and lose. But if he plays bishop to c5, just exchange the queens and uh, ruin black's castle rights. Instead of knight to a3, uh, white can also play bishop to e2 in this position or bishop to e3. I think bishop to e2 is a more natural move because you are preparing to castle. So after this, knight c6 castles, c takes d4, c takes d4, once again taking with the pawn and accepting an isolated queen's pawn. Bishop to e7, knight to c3. Um, it's, uh, I mean, you can't really say whether the d4 pawn is a strength or a weakness. For now, it's definitely restraining some of uh, black's attacking pieces. But in any endgame, black is going to have a structural advantage because of that. If you ask the engines, uh, this position is uh, almost all zeros, perfectly equal. But I think that both sides have something to play for. On, um, visually, at least, you can see that black's bishops are worse than, than white's. And he's going to have to waste a couple of moves to get them to better squares. And especially the light squared bishop, which isn't that easy to develop. You have to play b6, bishop to b7, move the knight somewhere, and it's not clear where just to be able to activate. Okay, so that's the move bishop to e2. And bishop to e3 uh, is another idea. I mean, you are simply reinforcing the d4 square, preparing to develop the, uh, the queen side pieces. So cd4, once again cd4, regardless of the fact that you played bishop to e3. Now knight to c6, knight c3, queen to d6. Uh, of course the queen had to move uh, I, in this position the queen didn't have to move you can also play bishop to bishop to b4 but i believe that you don't want your bishop on b4 you want it on the d6 square so on this diagonal so i believe it's better to play queen to d6 
Uh, so now a3, uh, stopping any ideas of knight b4 or bishop b4, bishop e7, bishop d3, castles, castles, and this is the starting position. You should remember. Once again, you can see that white's bishops are better, but white has a worse pawn structure. Uh, white had to waste the tempo to play a3, but black has uh, sort of inactive pieces compared to white's. All in all, uh, an imbalanced position, but still equal. Okay. Uh, so that's it after 5 e6 and uh, we have just gone over so d5 e takes d5 queen takes d5 d4 and knight to f6 so after knight to f6 we were looking at knight to f3 now instead of knight to f6 black can play knight to c6 and this position will most often transpose to the knight to f6 lines uh, but okay let's see to this white uh, once again reacts with knight to f3 Bishop to g4, a similar, a similar plan by, by black. Bishop to e2, and now cd4, once again cd4, taking with the pawn, and e6. And in this position, uh, black doesn't have a knight uh, on, on the f6 square, white doesn't have a knight on the c3 square, other than that it's pretty much equal. And this position is also key because it resembles uh, some variations of the Karo Khan, and uh, white can sometimes have trouble along this diagonal, and especially especially in this position. So white should always be careful. And uh, from black's perspective, I believe that the best plan is to, at some point, develop the knight to f6, uh, retreat the queen, or perhaps put it on h5, put the knight on the, on the d5 square, blockade the d4 pawn, and round it up. So that's, I believe, the best plan for, for black. Uh, white, on the other hand, should exploit the fact that uh, black is severely underdeveloped, that the king is still on e8 and that um, I mean it's in the center so it's vulnerable to attacks and you should try to get some attacking chances here okay so that's the move knight to c6 uh, after the move d4 so uh, black doesn't have to play knight to f6 or knight to c6 black can also play e6 immediately and I believe that this is a great surprise weapon even though um, I think engine wise this is the best move but uh, practically speaking I think you should go for moving either knight but it could be a great surprise weapon if if white isn't as prepared in the Alapin. So after knight to f3, knight to f6 it could transpose the, to the to the main line with knight to f6 but you should try to find something else. Uh, you should play around with this position and find some surprises. I was, uh, I was preparing this line against... I was preparing to play the c3 Sicilian against a player who always plays weird positions and I was actually looking at this uh, um, b6 and bishop to b7 immediately here, in which case I, th I think I would have gone for castling long and we would have had the weird position, but it never happened. But okay, let's go back. <clears throat> So after e4, c5, c3, the Alapin, we were just going over the move d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, d4. And this position is exactly why people thought this, uh, this variation to be equal for black, because after, uh, let's say here, white accepts the isolated queen spawn, uh, it's not really clear which advantage white has, and to be honest, I believe that black has equalized, but it's still considered to be a good opening. Now let's go over the main move. So e4, c5, c3, knight to f6. This is the main move. And similar to the Alyokhin defense, this move is of course of course provoking the move e5, chasing the knight further away. So e5, this is the only move. Knight to d5 is the only move. And d4 is, uh, I think, the best move, but there are other options. Now we will look at this. Uh, so d4 is one move. Knight to f3 is the second move. And they will most often transpose, uh, but there are some... Uh, positions which are unique for each move. So let's go over knight to f3 first. After knight to f3, uh, black should uh, play one of two moves. One move is d6, one move is knight to c6. Let's look at that now. So after knight to c6, simply attacking the e5 pawn, d4 should be played reinforcing the center, and c takes d4. This is the main this is the main main line, and this is most of what most often happens after the c3 Sicilian. Here white doesn't have to recapture immediately. In fact, the main move is bishop to c4, leaving the pawn uh, uh, undefended for now or unrecaptured for now. So now knight to b6, attacking the bishop, bishop to b3. You can also play bishop to b5 in some positions, but I think that uh, bishop to b5 should be played only after d6 had been played on the, already, because otherwise the knight isn't pinned. So now d5, uh, this is the main move. And you have to remember this is white. Whenever uh, black pushes d5 and your pawn is on e5, which is always, you always take Ampasan. That's that's a rule. I don't think there's a single line in the Alapin in which you don't take. So e takes d6. 
Uh, in this position, black can either take the d6 pawn or play e6. I think taking on d6 is better. Queen takes d6, castles, bishop e6, um, challenging the bishop on b3. So now bishop takes, queen takes, and now knight takes d4. Knight takes d4, and I believe this is the only line in which you don't take with the pawn, because you don't have to accept a structural disadvantage. Now you, you take with the queen, and after rook to d8, you play queen to h4. And okay, uh, I think that uh, engines find this position completely equal. I like it much better for white, because first of all, you have castled, and secondly, you have... Uh, your queen isn't as misplaced as it might seem. You're going to play bishop to e3, you're going to play knight to d2, knight to f3, and have a perfectly solid position. On the other hand, black has some ideas of, of knight to c4 and threatening the b2 pawn, but still, it's all far-fetched. Okay, so after knight to c6, d4, c takes d4, we just went over bishop to c4. The main move, of course, is to simply recapture the pawn. And this move isn't worse. I, I think that bishop to c4 is just more aggressive. But c takes d4 is good as well. So now d6, bishop c4, knight to b6 once again, and now bishop to b5 because the d6 pawn has moved already and now you are pinning the knight, so I think this should be played here. Uh, I believe that a6 is not a good move because if uh, a6, bishop c6, bc6, then your pawns are isolated and uh, weak. So d takes c5 should be played, that's the main move. Knight takes c5, increasing pressure on the c6 knight, bishop d7. Uh, now here you can either take the knight with the bishop or the bishop with the knight. I believe that knight takes d7 is the best option. Uh, queen takes d7, knight c3, e6, castles. This is the starting position of the main line Aljapin defense. Now once again, uh, white has an isolated queen spawn, uh, black is ready to blockade it with putting the knight on, on the d5 square, uh, but white has a lead in, in development, and if white manages to gain an initiative in the attack, he's going to be able to materialize on that advantage. Uh, otherwise, black is simply going to be better in any endgame, because he will easily round out the d4 pawn, blockade it, and then attack it and capture it. Okay, uh, so after the move knight to f3 on move 4, we just went over knight c6, d4, c takes d4, and then c takes d4 by white and bishop to c4. Now the second move after knight to f3 is the move d6 for black, and this is immediately challenging the overextended e5 pawn. Okay, uh, so... Uh, to this, there is only one move which white could play, I believe, that's d4. So now cd4, cd4 of course taking with the pawn, never take with the knight. Knight c6, bishop to c4, and we, we have almost transposed to the last line, instead of the, the pawn not being on c3. So now knight b6, once again bishop to b5, because the knight is pinned, uh, because the d6 pawn has moved. d5, knight e5, bishop d7, knight d7, this is the same variation. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you one trick here. In this position, uh, you have to take with the queen, and after you take with the queen, uh, white castles. After knight takes d7, if black recaptures with the knight, then white has a huge advantage, even though it's not uh, immediately obvious why. White can play d5 here, and this, is, this isn't winning material, it just wins such a lead in development, which uh, black can hardly catch up with. Uh, first of all, yeah, queen to queen to a5 doesn't work because of knight to c3 defending the bishop. So now knight c5, bishop to e3. It's not a spectacular move, it's just developing a piece, but still it's restraining all the black pieces. And for now, black is only playing with one knight because the other one is pinned. So now a6 should be played, bishop e2, knight f6, knight c3, g6, castles. And this is more than plus one for white. You can see that uh, white only has one more move to finish development. And black has two. But black's knight on e5 is misplaced, uh, black's pawn on b7 is weird and, and weak, and I believe that white is much better here. So, okay, that was the move d6. So after d6, uh, you play d4, cd4, cd4, knight c6, bishop c4, uh, knight b6, bishop b5, d5, knight e5, bishop d7, and knight d7. So that's the variation. Okay, uh, so we went over knight to d5 and knight to f3 sideline on move 4. Let's go over the main move. After knight to d5, the main move for white is uh, the move d4. And after d4, uh, black has to take on cd4, and you, you, play, you don't recapture, you play knight to f3. Uh, if, uh, after cd4, if, uh, I'm sorry, after knight to f3, if black ever takes on c3, then queen takes knight, 
it loses a piece, so that doesn't work. So black will play knight to c6, defending. Now c takes d4, or or bishop to c4 once again, and that's transposing to the to the line we just saw. So after c takes d4, d6 should be played once again, disrupting white central control. Bishop c4 once again transposing, knight to b6. Bishop to b5, you play bishop to b5 when the d-pawn has moved, you play bishop to b3 when the pawn is on d7 still. So now d5, knight takes c5, once again increasing the pressure on the c6 knight. Bishop d7, knight takes d7, queen takes d7, knight to c3, uh, e6, castles, bishop to e7, and this is the start of the main line. Once again, both sides have the same problems, same ideas, and... Uh, and the game continues as in the other variations. So, okay, uh, these are the lines I wanted to go over in this video. Uh, one good thing about the Alep and Sicilian is that it's fairly easy to remember for, for both sides. Unlike most other variations of the Sicilian, it's fairly straightforward and both sides have similar plans in almost every variation. And uh, it's, I believe it's a good weapon for white to fight the Sicilian and it's uh, definitely one of the most popular anti-Sicilian openings out there today. Okay, uh, I hope you got something from this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching uh, and stay tuned for more chess. I'm going to be making uh, videos on every other variation of the Sicilian. I'm finishing up uh, the series on Bobby Fischer, Jose Raul Capablanca and uh, much more. Okay, thanks very much. See you. Bye.